Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Brody Consulting Group. To get more information about our publishing and coaching services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Brody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Paris Cutler, author of the Planet Cake series. Paris, welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul. It's wonderful to be here. Are you ready to get started? I am certainly ready to get started, all the way from Australia. It's morning here. That's right. I say it's the um, afternoon when we're recording this, and it is good morning to you right now, I believe. Yeah, exactly. On the other side of the world. Well, that's the nice thing about technology. It brings everyone together. Yeah, it's wonderful. All right, question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? Currently writing their book. Um, Okay, well, there's two pieces of advice, actually, but I'll say them very quickly. The first one, and people might balk at this, is to understand what your goal is with a book. So is it distribution? Is it to make money? Is it marketing for your business? And um, when I approach a book, I approach it like a business. So my initial goal, I published five books through traditional publishing, and I was a, uh, they were recipe books. So this is in the how-to space. Um, was I looked at, okay, who my reader was, what my competition was, what my readers' needs were, and what my unique selling proposition was. And then I went to the bestsellers list and looked at all the kind of cake decorating books. That's my speciality, how they were selling. And what I discovered was that cake decorators and celebrity chefs and people in the how-to space tend to fall into a tendency of wanting to um, display their uh, finesse, their technique, their expertise. And where the really big market is in the how-to space is the beginner's market. Um, So by studying the bestsellers list, I looked at that. Then I had a different take on it with the methods that I used. Um, And then I wrote the book with that in mind. And um, so I had my target reader in mind. I had what I was doing in mind. And I had the competition in mind when I was writing it. And that really helps you when it comes to marketing your book and standing out from the crowd. And um, I actually... All of my five books were for beginners, and I actually used to get a lot of kind of jokes and ribbing from other celebrity chefs. You know, Paris, you writing another cupcake book. Oh, Paris, you know, teaches how to make another cake. And they would laugh at me. But um, at the end of the day, I had the last laugh because my books sold hundreds of thousands more copies than theirs did. Um, So I, I think having your reader in mind and having your unique selling proposition in mind from the very beginning is important. Um, I think it's also really important to note that you just need to write. I know everybody says this, but for example, I've worked out, I'm writing my sixth book now, which is different, it's a business book, but I worked out for every 50,000 words I write, I delete 40,000. So I only keep about 10 to 12,000 words. And that's just a process, through the process of writing, it comes through. I guess that's my advice. Just kind of have a good idea of who your reader is and don't, you know, kind of worry about your writing style. Just write, go with it, and then edit it later. Well, and it sounds like, too, that your focus on it with with this latest book in particular is having it direct and to the point and a type of book that someone can read in in a several-hour flight. So you're getting all that great information and then you're edited down for that content. Absolutely. So with this book, I know exactly which entrepreneur I'm writing it for. I know which difficulties that they're suffering right now, that my book is answering those questions and those problems that they're having. I know how my book right now sits in the market in terms of other business books because it's a really crowded market, a very, very crowded space. So I know how it differentiates. It's very clear. It's very, very concise. You don't need to be a great writer to write a great book. You, you just don't. And that's really, really sad for wonderful writers. But I'm not a great writer. And um, all my books have sold really, really well. You just have to ha- be very, very clear and concise, as you said. And that's how people like to read. People are time poor. Yeah, and they want to be able to connect with you with the story. You know, one thing I've always used Correct. is storytelling and just sharing those Absolutely. struggles. 
Absolutely. So my latest book has lots of kind of really very honest, very raw stories, stuff that kind of leaves you thinking, oh, Paris, you know, that's terrible or that's so embarrassing or, or you know, whatever it is, really kind of revealing a lot in, in, in your work about yourself. And I think truth resonates. Storytelling definitely resonates. Theory does not resonate. Mm -hmm. um, clever ideas do not resonate. What resonates is using um, experience, wisdom, maybe a little bit of theory, but how it applies to a personal story. And people are just cannot get enough of stories. Story medicine, that's what it is. Yeah, storytelling is the number one way to connect with your readers. And that's always what I mention to my clients is it's not about having everything absolutely perfect. It's about being no. able to tell a story. And if you can tell a story, then you can write a book. Yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree with you. And I, I think that everyone thinks they probably don't have stories within them. But even simple stories... Um, coupled together with the point that you're trying to make really resonate. You don't need to try and sound clever. Well, and the way you market it too, with having those beginning books, I, I think is absolutely great. My three publishing books, they basically went up essentially an ascension model where the first book was book publishing for beginners, then we went up a little bit to book publishing for authors, but then we took those together for the latest book for Get Published, and we, we basically shared both of those stories for beginning authors, for current authors, and people that want to level up where we're like, okay, this is why you want to do that. But having that approach where you are going after those beginners in the market, that is one of the best strategies that you can utilize because not enough people are catering to that market. Absolutely. I agree with you 100%, Paul. And honestly, it is the biggest market. And, and when you get a beginner in, just as you said, the thing I learned through working through a traditional publishing house is the tendency is, okay, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to put everything into that one book and then it's done. That's my that's my um, kind of totem pole that it, it, my book is written. And they were like, no, 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 Paris, save it for the second book, the third book, the fourth book. Have an idea of where you're going to go with this and roll it out. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and so I got the beginner's market. When my first book was absolutely huge. It was published in um, 12 countries and it was translated in seven languages. And from that, um, I then already, you know, the, a lot of those original buyers went on and bought all my other books as well. So it was the beginner's market, definitely. Well, what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? Uh, I think these days with self-publishing, um, there's really no barrier to entry. Certainly there was a barrier to entry when I f first started writing. Get it? You had to get in with a big publishing house. Um, what I learned from going through a big publishing house was that when I first started writing in 2008, they did everything. So I went to the big publishing house, pitched my idea. They said, great. I just wrote the book and then they just basically threw money at it. So they gave me an editor, they did a big marketing campaign, they did all the distribution and that was wonderful. I could just sit back and just kind of forget about my book and they handled everything. That has now changed. So my fifth book that I wrote, I went in, pitched the idea. They made me do several pitches. They really constrained me with what I wanted to publish. They had to make sure it was selling, that, that it would sell. So they were very sales focused, which really limited my creativity and what it, the message I wanted to write in my book. Um, and then it was basically, you know, well, Paris, how are you going to market this? Paris, what are you going to do about this? Paris, how are you going to do this? And I was thinking, wow, this is a really big, well-known publishing house. And I, I may as well self-publish. Um, so with my sixth book, I am looking at self-publishing. But I think the real difficulty in uh, publishing is the distribution and the marketing. And I think every one of your listeners and people that are writing the book, this would probably be their number one concern. And even after publishing five books and even after having a name and a reputation and an established audience, with my sixth book, I'm still concerned about that. So I, I, I personally, even though I've gone through this process before, will be looking at working with a consultant to manage that process. And it, it's not a plug for your services. You know, this is not kind of a pay plug here but really the publishing game just works so differently to any other industry I've worked with and I, you know I work in business and I still try and wrap my head around publishing because the way the books are distributed the way that they're marketed etc cetera, etc cetera, it's just so kind of foreign to the way normal business operates I don't know whether you'd agree with me Paul but it's just like some funny things like you think okay I'll get my book into China well th that's actually considered a different language 
Um, and so that, you know, there's translation, there's this, there's that, um, marketing your book, how do you get it onto Amazon? How do you get it here? You know, there's so many tricks of the trade. It's really good to actually work with someone that understands publishing. So yeah, for my sixth book, I'll definitely be working with someone, but I'm looking forward to going through the self-publishing route. I think that'll be really interesting. Well, and the biggest consistent you have with any levels of publishing, whether it's traditional, hybrid, indie, however you want to refer to it, is change. Everything changes so much. I mean, when I did my first book three years ago, it's a whole different beast now, and so many things change. Even on my last book launch, there were three or four different variables that changed, and you have to be able to not only be current with everything that's going on in publishing, but you also have to be able to adjust to all the changes, because if you don't do that, then you're not going to have a successful launch. Yeah, absolutely, and the launch is key. If the launch doesn't go, you know, if the launch is not planned, like for example, I've had a friend recently that published a wonderful book. It's actually an autobiography and a, they're a Holocaust survivor. So it's a very interesting book. They launched it, they had a party, they did it themselves and then flop, no sales. Mm -hmm. um, and they came to me and they were basically like, what's happened? You know, cause you spent five, they spent five years writing the book. It's really disappointing. And you know, it's not about making money. They just wanted as many people to hear this story as possible. And I was basically kind of like, oh, well, you know, for want of a better word, you've kind of done it all wrong. And even though I've published five books, I'm not actually on top of how you're going to do a book launch today. So you're absolutely right. It's changing so quickly. They followed the traditional method that probably would have worked five years ago when they started writing their book. That's completely changed. They're not on Amazon. They're not here. They're not there. They don't have a website for the book. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it, it, it hasn't panned out. And that's really disappointing after so much work. So I think, um, yeah, I think staying on top of what's, what's current now is absolutely mandatory. And the other, you know, I've just done a little bit of study for my sixth book. And, um, you know, unless you've already got an, a huge established audience, and I would say I've got an established audience, but not a huge one, like into the hundreds and hundreds of thousands, um, then selling from your own personal web page can be difficult without, you know, other support, you know, and uh, channels coming into there. Yeah, it's a bit of a minefield. So I would definitely recommend working with a consultant in the launch of your book, definitely. Well, and one of the worst things is when you do have a launch, you expect it to go well, and then they don't have the most current marketing methods, and then it doesn't. And one thing that I refer to it as, and this sounds a little bit harsh, but it, it's literally what happens, is that book disappears into the Amazon rainforest. Because with Amazon, there's millions of books that come out every year, and if you don't yeah. have that right game plan, then that book is gonna disappear, and that's terrible, um, with having yeah. the books been out for five years. But one thing I will mention, and my company is one of the few companies that does this, is that we've actually created a new service called our Second Chance Book Launch. And basically what it means is we will work with our clients that have not necessarily had the best launch, but what will happen is we'll actually help them create a second edition. And then through that, we are able to launch the book again, essentially as a brand new book release. And that is one of the methods that we found for authors that have really put their heart and souls into a book. And for whatever reason, it didn't work out where we will take them on, we'll help them with the second edition and are able to help them get the results they're looking for. Because it really is a great opportunity to have a second chance at doing it again. That's a brilliant idea. That's, uh, that is truly a brilliant idea. And, and yeah, I, I would actually recommend that to this friend of mine whose um, book has just kind of panned a little bit. I think that that's great. I'll tell them about that. I think that's great. Well, and this will transition perfectly into our next question. And of course, that is about marketing. So please share a marketing strategy that you have used in your book launch that worked well. Well, this is a little bit left field. I don't know whether it's been covered before, but when you're looking at doing how-to books in the how-to space, the date that you launch is all important because um, certainly in Australia and um, in the UK, which is the markets that I know very well, we know that the biggest buying time for books is Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas time, or any other holidays as they might be relevant in other countries where you would be buying gifts. And and so I always launched my books two months prior to 
Christmas or two months prior to Mother's Day. And the reason for that is that when you're looking at your marketing strategy, you can then start pushing it into the gift market, not just down the traditional sales routes. So I, for example, was getting on the Christmas suggested lists, the Mother's Day gift suggested lists. Um, I was pushing it into that type of market and utilizing all the um, the other kind of uh the media, so the gift that the we're focusing on kind of gift buying, I was able to use that media as well. So I think the one thing that I've seen many, many authors make a mistake with is just to launch their book at any old time thinking, oh, okay, well, it's March, that's fine, without actually considering are people buying books at this time? Is this a gift buying book? you know market and when I look at my book sales so my first book was launched in 2009 it's still selling really well and I always see a spike um, Mother's Day Christmas time still in my sales and that's you know nearly 10 years later I'm seeing a spike there and it, it, it really is a good way to kick off a launch is to really focus on the date and that could be specific to a particular event depending on your book but that works tying it in nicely with an event well, and that's one, one amazing thing. So we've done over 140 plus interviews on the show so far, and you are the first person that's actually talked about utilizing the correct dates. Because one thing I always emphasize to my clients is if you're wanting to take full advantage of your launch, then the best time of the year is always between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I launch a book every year during that time because yeah. it's such a nice spike in sales and it helps if you you have other books as well. It's going to have a boomerang yep. effect where you're going to get multiple sales through all your different books. So yeah, I'm so happy Absolutely. someone has finally talked about the dates because it really does make a huge difference because having the right dates can make all the difference between having a great launch and an exceptional launch. Absolutely. Like, honestly, this is the number one piece of advice I would give. Number one piece of advice. And all the big publishing houses know this. So that's why we're seeing um, in Australia currently a whole lot of new books flooding the market. And I know where they're flooding the market. They're, all these new books are coming out now. They were probably written 12 months ago. Is because they're taking advantage of the buying spree that's coming up to Christmas. It makes a massive difference. And it also makes a massive difference to your exposure and your marketing because you're then able to leverage off a lot of influencers that probably wouldn't be interested in marketing your book during other times because it might not be relevant to the subject matter that they talk about but as a gift and through that type of market yeah it becomes relevant so it's it's a huge leverage the date is probably the biggest leverage point that i use absolutely i'm so glad i finally had a guest that brought that up so <laughs> <laughs> i'm really glad you did that because you're right it oh, really good. can be a game changer massive game changer well let's talk about your favorite book so what is your favorite book and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? Uh, my favorite book is, is probably a favorite of a lot of people, and that's Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now. I don't tend to read much fiction. I read a lot of nonfiction. Um, and I think, obviously, Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, it's still in the bestsellers list. It's been in the bestsellers list ever since he published it. I don't think it's a particularly well-written book, and I think this kind of proves my book point going back to the beginning he writes very simply it's very very direct he's not kind of you know it's not Shakespeare but he just has a really important message to tell and it resonates and um, I think most people that own that book have read it two three four times and that's because the message comes from a place of truth obviously um, you know it's specific to people that are kind of interested in that self-help uh, spiritual genre but it's also referenced in a lot of other things and I, I think what I take away from that is that everybody has a message Everybody has, you know, a kind of mission. Everyone has a story to tell. And if you tell that from a place of truth um, in a very clear and simple way, it makes for a very, very successful book. And uh, so uh, that's probably my favorite book. I took away from it as a writer. I took away from it, um, um, you know, I took away the message spiritually and, you know, it impacted on my life quite a bit. Um, and you know even just the title of the book now kind of resonates in circles and it's referenced everywhere else it's a very very powerful book and for a final question what is your favorite quote and why 
I have a very, very simple quote, and I use this for everything. It's an ancient Hebrew quote, and it's, this too shall pass. And uh, that is relevant for everything. It's relevant for writer's block, this too shall pass. It's relevant for failure. It's relevant for a political climate. But it's also relevant for success. Everything's impermanent. Well, Paris, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? Uh, probably at this stage through LinkedIn. Um, I've got another business launching so shortly and a new um, web page going up shortly, but probably the best page is Paris Cutler. I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram. And yeah, you'll just see all the new stuff coming out in my new book launch shortly. Well, Paris, I want to thank you once again for being on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Paul. Pleasure. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how to get your book published with a proven system that works, grab a free copy of my book at getpublishedpodcast.com.